This is Shudders Inc. with Bruce Williams and Glenn Lavender. Hi and welcome to episode 534 of Shutters Inc. This is Bruce Williams from ShuttersIncPodcast.com and joining me once again from Melbourne, Victoria, it is Mr. Glenn Lavender from CreativePhotoWorkshops.com.au. I thought you were doing a talk tonight. Hmm? Weren't you meant oh, to be yeah, doing you're, a- you're, you're, we're, going, we're going live in a minute. <laughs> thought we'd make the podcast interesting for once and right. you could listen to me talk to other people. Right. Rather than talk to you. <laughs> right. Was that not tonight? Oh, no, that was last time. Did you oh. know, follow my Facebook? I do. It was obviously oh, yes. I, it was obviously yesterday that I saw that. Not I today. Even put, I, I, even, I even put up the intro of what I. Uh, how, I know. I saw I it, it and me. I and See? I clicked laugh on it. I liked See? it. But I, I thought that was today. Wasn't meant to be funny that I had seen it. So. Oh no! I never, I never show, I never show the intro before I go on because ah. yeah, uh, people who are going to be there might see it. Right, gotcha. And no gotcha. one's supposed to know what it says until the poor person who's got to stand up and do the talking. Yeah, right. Gets to see it one second before they have to introduce me. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you lull them into a false sense of security by saying, to make your job easier, I've written my own bio. <laughs> yeah. uh, because, yeah, it's nothing worse when you've got a guest, you don't really know what to say to them yeah. and uh, or about them, and yeah. you, you, know, you want to get accurate information. So, nice. so I always write my own. Always. And, uh, <laughs> and, and we may as well, for those listeners who want, sort of, A, take up time of the podcast, which we do need, <laughs> it's almost slightly photo-related. So uh, my, my <laughs> intro was this. Tonight, we are in for a real treat. Now, I must say, the emphasis I give the syllables yeah. on this, yeah. far better than the guy who heard it last night. Right. Fair, fair enough, <laughs> he's reading it for the first time, yeah. uh, and he missed a few pretty important words and had to go back, which kind of lost some of the momentum. Right. You know? uh, tonight, we are in for a real treat. Now, actually, whilst I mention it, uh, one of our podcast listeners was in the audience. This is going to take a while, folks. Uh, yes, who was in the audience? One of our podcast listeners. <laughs> Which one? Number eight, he called himself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I forgot to get his name. <laughs> or he told me, and I since subsequently forgot. But I did pressure him to say, he sent some bloody content in. Right. So... <laughs> Dude, send some bloody content in. Because, yeah, me and Bruce, he did say that I was as bad in real life as I am on the podcast, which is, you know, which is charming, you know. But accurate. Uh, and that I waffle, on, I waffle on just as much live as I do on here. Yeah. So, so there's that, that's always a thing. Yeah. So tonight, we're in for a real treat. As soon as we get the speaker to stop talking about himself, there's biscuits and cake. There we are, and tea. There's, what a treat indeed. See, that works, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, our speaker, Glenn, is the owner of Creative Photo Workshops, a Melbourne-based training and photo tour company. Glenn is also one of Australia's most unawarded photographers. He has not won awards from such prestigious organisations. Now, it's pretty bad when the guy goes, he has won awards from such. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the, the not was fairly salient. Yeah, it's a fairly important point. Yeah, he has not won awards from such prestigious organisations as WPPI, Head On, AIPP and Sony International Travel Photo Awards. Next year, he hopes to not win several more. Uh, and unfortunately, he forgot the heat not on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn was, however, voted best photographer in his family by his mum before the cataract surgery. Uh, he, and, and, and here's the only true bit of the whole statement, other than the tonight bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, the, I'm the owner of the word. The most important bit, anyway, is he says he doesn't know much about photography, but he knows what he likes, and he loves spouting his opinions on pretty much everything. So sit down, strap in, and remember, there's tea and biscuits at the end. <laughs> uh, <Nice>. So the... <laughs> <laughs> spouting opinions on every possible subject. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Excellent. I'm yet to find a subject I don't like. Yep. <laughs> so, so that one, that that almost went damn well. You know, you try and set the scene. You try and set the 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 the, the mood for what the night's going to actually be like. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah, but it does rely on you know, reasonable reading skills. <laughs> so we may so we may have a couple of new listeners, uh, right? Because a few people said, "What was the name of your podcast?" Right. Uh, I'll make sure we we never look it up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, a couple said, no, we we actually might. So right. you never know, we might have, as of tonight, so we've got any uh, listeners from the Frankston Photo Club. Uh, <laughs> Welcome rocking. aboard. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell by the intro, as in the first 
I don't know, eight minutes we've been going so far or whatever. <laughs> it's the same crap as last night. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Me talking, 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 Bruce trying to get a word in. That's it. That's it. So how's your last two weeks been? <sighs> Good 14. Actually, I, I got on the TV twice. Oh, okay. I've been on TV. I've been on Channel 7. So your Channel balance is okay then? News. You didn't fall off? No, no. Good, no good. I, 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 I was tap dancing on top of the TV. No. Um, yeah, I've been on been, been on two two TV stations. I've been interviewed by right. Channel Seven and Channel Nine. Why? Uh, hmm? Why? Why? Because yeah. it's me, Bruce. Right. It's me, of course. <laughs> no, Why would they not want just my opinion? I told you, <laughs> I've got opinions. Happy to share them. No, what more do you need? You know? No, my 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 football club. Got a new coach. Oh, you did, and and we a, were very, so a very a very in demand coach. I understand. Yeah, we had we had the most the most successful coach of the modern era of football. Yeah, cut, but chose uh, from three suitors my poor lowly club that's been struggling for a fair few years. Yeah, right. And uh, who he used to play for, yeah, you know, thirty odd years ago. Uh, so it's been a, it's a big, yeah, momentous occasion. You know? Nice. And uh, and and I wasn't of the uh, the mob that oh I hope he comes, I hope he comes. I didn't really care that much. You know? Right. Okay, if he did, there's other good people out there. It wasn't, uh, but the closer it got to maybe he might. I got more and more excited, not because of having him, but the fact that my club has tried to get you know, big name players for a fair few times, and as, all as fought, coaches or no, as or as, as players, as, as players to come right. and play, right? And uh, they've all said no. So everyone we've gone after, I bet that's any good, has all said no. Right. Now, to be fair, they haven't gone somewhere else. They've stayed at their own clubs, right? Which is so that's fair enough. But yeah. uh, but every big fish that we've gone after hasn't worked out so to finally have a big fish say yes was a big moment yeah nice so so i was feeling feeling so so chuffed about it all i thought and, and i knew the team were, were doing a, a training run that day at, the, at their ground so i thought i'll i'll go down and this is this will surprise um yeah maybe nfl fans and stuff like that. so the afl is the biggest sport in our country yep. and they're the biggest players in our country um you can go down and you can actually stand on the ground when they're practicing yeah and you can chat to the players and you know just talk like normal people yeah so it's, it's a pretty good environment for yeah. our elite athletes it's not you know they're not sort of hidden away like some of the biggest sports around the world yep um so I thought I'll go down the oval and uh, and and have a bit of a, a bit of a yeah, soak in the atmosphere, but I got there too late and they'd already scarpered, you know, <laughs> right. and all that was left was the media, and oh, they were okay. waiting around for a couple of hours for the big press conference with the new coach coming in, so they had nothing else to do, and <laughs> I'm walking up and, and there's no one else there, there's only me. I mean, the entire place is empty, you know, and I'm walking up in my club hat, my club scarf, and they've come a running over. Excuse me, do you mind if we have a few words? And, yeah, so I sat and got interviewed by one, and I went about three feet. And, and Glenn the other said, one if only you can, knew what you've let yourself in for. Can, 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 we, can we interview you too, you know? Um, <laughs> So that was that was kind of good, and I got a, yeah, a few people sent me messages that they saw me, including one last night. They said oh, I saw you on TV. Wow! Uh, so yeah, that was pretty good. Cool. Uh, I didn't see myself. Yeah, that's the last thing I want to see. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, so that's so, so, so that's that's the uh, most visual, almost photographic thing I've done the last two weeks. Right. It's been on the other side of a camera twice. Yeah. Right. What else? Anything, um, did I take any photos? Don't think I did. Did I edit any photos? I don't think I did. Did I do anything interesting? I don't think I did, Bruce. Right. So there, yeah. That's a normal. <laughs> oh, mind you, I will. I will say um, one of the t- one of the, uh, l- the listeners, one of the um, attendees last night came to one of my India tours. It was lovely to see Christina again. Oh, okay. And it was really cool. Today she posted a whole bunch of photos in memory of that trip. On the Facebook, and oh, there's nice. a photo of me in India that I'd never seen, which is really good. Cool. Yeah, so that was kind of nice. So that was a that was a bit of a, um, a, a bit of a cool thing. Yeah, nice. Uh, let me see. What else? Do I, do I, uh, just see if I've got any photos. Did I take any photos? No, nothing, nothing at all. No. <laughs> uh, oh, I went and saw Kiss. I took some photos at Kiss. Oh, okay. Was it a good show? No, I, I went and saw Kiss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Were you not a fan? 
Oh, this is oh, this is about the seventh time I've seen them over forty-two years, Bruce. Right. I think, which just kind of shows you <laughs> how old they're getting <laughs> and how long in the tooth they're getting. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've I've seen them, and not at the beginning of their career. I saw them seven or eight years into their career. Yeah, so that, forty-two that, years ago, that would have been yeah. the dynasty tour. It was a dynasty tour, uh, or as they call it, dynasty. Oh, in, the, in America, rubbish. so it's dynasty. No, <laughs> but they always used to know. You call it dynasty, we call the dynasty you know right um <laughs> yeah so yeah that so that Great was the album. 1980 Great 19, no, no it's, anyway um <laughs> <laughs> the, there's only one good song on the album okay I, I like two good songs on the album okay 2000 man which is a cover which is a cover of rolling stone that's probably yeah. why it's good yep and it's ace really has got a bit more of an edgy voice yeah um, and Sean knows something. And uh, charisma. Oh, okay, charisma. Yeah. What is my charisma? What is it I've got? Yeah. What is it about me that makes you so hot, Bruce? <laughs> um, it's that beanie, uh, mate. It's that beanie. Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing. It's cold out here. Um, I even went out and bought the twelve inch of that charisma song. Yeah, right. That's, that's, uh, so that was Gene Simmons singing that with a bit of a deeper, bit of edgier voice. But let's face it, now they're in their early seventies. Yep. Um, the lead singer, the main lead singer, Paul, can't even talk into the microphone anymore without his voice cracking. Oh, really? It's cracking and breaking up just even trying to talk. Wow. You know, is, so you imagine what his singing's like. Yeah, right. It's probably the most low-energy paint-by-numbers show I've seen of theirs. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit sad. And But but then, you know, one of my customers... Uh, who's, she, who's the drummer that, these days? Uh, Eric Singer. Right. Who was in the band back in like the early nineties? I think it was, and then left, and then came back again right. after the after the after they kicked out the original drummer again, um, Peter Chris. But one one of, one of my customers went, and it turns out we're only about thirty feet apart at the show, which I didn't know. But okay. then I saw her photos. It was her first ever Kiss show. Oh wow! And she'd never really thought or known much about Kiss before, and she's been raving about it for days about really? how good it was. Right. So, I mean, I guess it's your expectation, it's your your um, experience of them over a journey, yep. so whether they're any good or not. Certainly things like pyrotechnics and the, the staging was all great. I was just about to ask, visually, was it spectacular? Visually, it was fabulous. Yep. Just performance was soft. And, yeah, yep. yeah, it was just... Yeah, a bit cruddy. But, you I, know. I've got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous about what the you know the next Springsteen World Tour is going to be like, which kicks off later this year. You know, because again, yeah, he's like yeah. approaching seventy four. I, I saw a thing. Speaking of age, I saw a thing this week. Um, it was the the thirty eighth anniversary of the tenth night in a row of Meadowland Stadium. Yep. doing the Born in the USA tour. Yep. Uh, and that, that, that particular day was, that was the 38th end. And my mate Stan Harrison, was, who's was playing those 10 yes. nights, uh, was tagged it. That's what I, that's what I saw. I thought, yeah. wow, 38 years ago, you know, again, that's, yeah. as you say, in the 70s, they're, they're, I just have a feeling, I don't know, he's, he's probably got a bit more get up and go uh, yeah. than yeah. Kiss. I mean, you don't have to be on like eight inch high heels wearing a 30 kilo <laughs> outfit and doing makeup for three hours yeah. before you go on, yeah. you know. Uh, his get up and go uh, is probably there. I think Kiss has got up and went. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, so um, yeah, I think I think it'll be a, a big difference. So I don't know. Do you reckon it'll be his last tour? I do. I do. Yeah. 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 I, I certainly like think Elton it'll John be. The, and... I think it'll certainly be the last East Street Band tour. He might. Oh, tour is it actually solo. an East Street Band tour? Is yeah. It? Yep. Oh, okay. Because the thing is, he's he's got like three albums he hasn't been able to tour with. Oh, really? Uh, and a new one that's, you know, s- rumoured to be around the corner. So, oh, man. you know. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's a problem. If you've got a home recording studio. Yes, he does. And time a on very, your hands. Very yeah, good that, one. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're kind of, um, yeah, that's idle hands kind of thing. You yeah. Know? Oh, it's going to have a, have a bit of a poodle. So you start producing all this material. What are you going to do with it? That's you know? exactly right. Uh, yeah. So. so what's he thinking about these days, like the Zimmer frames and, <laughs> and you know, Viagra pills and yep, you know, vitamin yep. vitamin drinks? Yep, that's it. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Bent down and I hurt my back. <laughs> that sort of stuff, you know? 
<laughs> Something like that. Um, I just leant over and I heard a crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. Uh, you should send him that. Uh, <laughs> I'll give some song, some song ideas. I'll send it to Stan. The Stan knows him, yeah. so he can send it. I'll write the whole thing out for him and That's say, mate, I thought you might want to pass this on. Slip uh, this under his door. <laughs> under his desk. Under his slip desk. Um... He, he, yeah, he may take offence to that, though, Bruce. <laughs> Why just, is that? Just thinking about it. Yeah, well, no, yeah, I think people get a bit delicate when you talk about how old they're getting. <laughs> Since 2005, Shutters Inc. has been a labour of love. But beyond the time required to produce it, there is also a financial commitment. If you find value in the podcast and would like to help keep the servers running, hit up the Patreon link, which is in the show notes. Even a couple of dollars a month will help. Much appreciated. Now, back to the podcast. And what have you been up to the last two weeks? Anything excitement? I'm, I'm well. The hydro dipping um, is come, oh, yes, coming yes, along. Yes. So <laughs> I ended now? up ended up going through the whole of the first roll of film um, with failed attempts. Um, oh, but, but so you used up a roll of film this week. That's good. Yeah, yeah well, over the last couple of weeks, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, but I, at, right at the end of that roll of film, I had just enough to dip all four pieces and if they all succeeded i would have been completed and i i said to kath and max i'm just going to go for it and if i if one of them gets stuffed up then i've just got to go and buy another roll of film in which case i'll you know have time to do more experimenting and whatever but two failed and the last two Uh came out really well Uh, but with just minor blemishes. And I figured, well, I've got to buy another roll of film anyway, so I'll just redo all four because now I feel like, yep, got it sussed. I've got the process down now. So Uh, how do you take the stuff off that you put on? Sandpaper. (laughs) Oh, jeez, dude. So you sand it it right back, reprime it, rebase coat it, re-dip it, Re- re-gloss it and then <laughs> my gosh what a process it's been a work of, of yeah a, a big working process so no wonder you're grey but it, yeah <laughs> but it's been good fun it's been a good learning experience and in the process so that sounds like manual labor and just torture to me you know uh, yes and no i like learning new stuff oh uh, that's what i would yeah so so, so <laughs> what, what, the, the, the the guy who introduced me last night uh, at the talk, at the end, it said, I've got a question, after even the last question, said, I've got a question for you. And he says, uh, uh, what were you like in school? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I got thrown out at 14, so you tell me. <laughs> so the, there's the difference between two of us. You like to learn new stuff, yep. thrown out at 14. <laughs> there you go. Um, but I, I, I must confess I've been struggling with dark table um there was a new, oh. new release you know a month ago because um, yeah. you know there are two new releases every year um so it's usually end of june start of july and in this instance it was start of july so it was six weeks ago and wow. to be honest i i just haven't been that inspired with what was in this release and it's kind of had me dragging my heels to turn out the content and i'm starting to feel a bit guilty Can't you just do it like a an update of what's updated and not rather than naturally that's just not your nature that's the thing i'm just i'm just struggling to even sit down and attempt it so i need to get how, my act how together. much stuff changed how much was it was there any minor changes or yeah that's kind of how it felt to me like none of the stuff was really major it wasn't exciting there weren't new modules that did funky new stuff. It was a lot of technical... Then you, know, you know what you need to do? You know what hood. you need to do? What's that? Do some reader-inspired episodes based on the... So they'll have all probably done the updates. Yeah. Put a video out saying, guys, I want you to tell me what you want to know about the new updates. What have you seen that's different? What do you think's interesting? What do you, uh, uh, what, what do you want me to show you on this? And, and if no one comes back to anything, yep. don't bother putting a, a video out. <laughs> if you get a whole bunch of people giving you ideas, yep. then they're giving you a, they're giving you the content free of charge, basically. Yeah. And if and if, if, if and you find something that they say that's moderately inspiring, then you can do a little something on it. The thing if is, you, I've got, the, just do a I've quick got the, the, the list of all the stuff that's new and changed yeah, I know, and whatever. But, but, but if it doesn't, doesn't interest you... Mm. 
it might interest 50 people or 100 people out there, which means it interests, interests lots of people. Yeah. If you get the same response 20 times, yeah. oh, yeah, I really want to know, then there's your, there's your lead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To to draw for to, to to you know you're catering to what people are actually interested in rather than what you're not interested in. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea, Bruce, and you should do it. <laughs> yeah. as, it uh, as 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 my wife said, uh, as uh, my wife said to me this afternoon by text, she was out at work for once, and she goes, "Oh, uh, I said something." She goes, "That's a really good idea." And I said, "What? <laughs> <laughs> like you expect anything different?" <laughs> so do it, put it out there. Yep. Put it out there. Say, so, yeah, you you tell me. Yeah, yep. let's have a chat yep. about the crap that's come out, and tell yep. me and, and, and tell me your, your top three things yeah that you that you've seen different in this update and whichever ones come out one two three yeah over all the list readers we'll do a video on each of those individually or as a group depending on how in yeah. depth they are yeah 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 so other than that um just you know working 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 um having a ball at the abc um really yeah just yeah it's easy as one two three i'm told <laughs> there you go uh had a cortisone injection in the left Ooh. heel uh yesterday Why? uh i've developed a bone spur on my left heel oh yeah they're no fun are they it is not fun i've been putting up with it for about four or five months and uh been using a lot of voltaren gel on it which kind of worked but just wasn't really but the build up of the voltar and gel makes the spur bigger <laughs> <laughs> dries out and gets bigger and bigger and deeper and so yeah just so you know that you... same paper you've been using for your panels in the car just <laughs> I don't know, just work, work the spur down a bit with those yeah. there you go yeah you're like, you say you're like learning new things how about some foot surgery <laughs> There you go. DIY foot surgery at that. Learn, learn how to make a local anaesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Learn how to keep a wound clean. Yeah, there's <laughs> lots of lessons here for you. The anaesthetic comes in a bottle, doesn't it? 700 mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's made by the Johnny Walker Medical yeah, Company. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's been the last couple of weeks for me. Yeah, that's bones. I've, I've got a, a similar thing out of my kneecaps. Oh, um, so when I kneel down, yeah, it's so painful. It's like kneeling on a rock. Oh, yeah, which makes photography kneeling down really true. So I could have to kneel on an angle, yeah, so right. I don't kneel on these on these bone lumps. Ouch, yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah, and and can you get a, like a cortisone injection for those or not? No, no, they're, they're actually they're actually just bone sticking out. Right, you know, it's big, big lump. Of, it, it's a very common sports injury. I've got them on the, one, of, one of my one of my shins as well. Ooh. So they stick out like about a centimeter and a half. Wow. Yeah, I mean, hardly this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's so, so, so a fairly known um, high impact sports injury. I'm going to, somebody must have given it to me. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there. So, you, but I've had those for years. You just got to get used to that. You yeah, know, just got to work yeah. around the angles and stuff. But, but when you put shoes on and stuff, that's pretty well, tricky that's too, though. Well, that's kind of why I've been putting up with it for as long as I had, because I thought it would settle down and I thought the Voltarum would help. And, and it just it, it made life miserable. And for a while there, I wasn't doing any shifts for Coles because it was just causing me too much pain. Yeah, um, they got to do something about that. Yeah, yeah so... It's impacting your life that much. Yeah, so eventually I just went, oh, I'm going to have to go for the, the cortisone injection because it was either that or surgery. And I So how does a cortisone injection... Improve the bone spur. I don't know, but I tell you what, does it build up? Does it build up today? like a really? Yep. Does, so, does it build up stuff around the outside of it to cushion it? Does I it? wonder if it does do yeah. a little bit of that. Uh, there has been suggestions that it may wear off after six months, and so you know I might yeah. need to go back and have it every six months. Uh, Amputated. <laughs> the injection just below the neck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So we'll see what happens. But uh, today it's, it's great. You know, I'm walking without pain for the first time in five months. So, yeah, God. that's pretty good. That's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It's terrible, Muriel. Yeah. And, and it doesn't doesn't diminish as you – so it might hurt for like the first five minutes and then kind of dissipates as you go along or it just stays painful all the time? It goes up and down. 
It'll it'll always be the yeah, worst first foot. thing in the morning, and particularly the morning after a day where I've been active on my feet. Um, so if I you know if I had done a shift for Coles, delivering groceries, and I you know come home, go to sleep, get up in the morning, I'll be in agony, you know. Um, and then it, sometimes mm-hmm. it'll it'll settle down through the day, but then it'll flare up in the middle of the day, and yeah. So Man. kind of glad I finally went and had the injection. So. Yeah, I'm sure if, if you get some relief for a little bit, yeah, you know. totally. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's talk some crap photography stuff. And since we've yeah we've got through all the good stuff, let's do the crap. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is a photography podcast. Isn't what have it? What have you got on your list? Uh, yeah, well, here's the thing. I actually looked up some stuff today, which is right. Yeah, this is the most effort I've put into this podcast in a couple of years. <laughs> Fantastic. I did see. Oh, quite, I'm quite glad research. you pulled this up because I was thinking. I'm sure that's Glenn's mate. Who? Andrew McCarthy. Never heard him. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't he? Wasn't he in the? Um, wasn't he in Pretty in Pink? <laughs> I don't know. Was he? I think he, I think he was. Wasn't I'm not sure. It might be. It, there's a chance it may not be the same guy. Wasn't this Andrew McCarthy guy? Wasn't he the guy that you met on a India tour and he was travelling with a mate and they were photographing stuff? No, there's Andrew Studer. Ah. Oh, I was halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andrew, but right. Not a very common name, that's. Yeah, Andrew McCarthy was in uh, was in Pretty in Pink. I just looked it up. Right. <laughs> But I'll say not necessarily the same person. Probably it not. may not be. Yeah, <laughs> it may not be. Uh, as my mate, as my mate uh, Adam uh, sent a message to me t- uh, today. Yeah. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but he rewrote my introduction to the Canberra Club last night. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says uh, so. You wanted the best. They were busy, <laughs> so we got to the one and only Glenn Lavender because he's the only person with that name in the world. <laughs> so at least I've got um, the, 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 this poor Andrew McCarthy probably gets pretty and pink references every time he sends something, you know. Uh, uh, no, I don't know who it is, but I did. But I, I was coming, I was going through my Facebook feed today and I saw someone had posted it. Right, uh, my mate, a guy called John Goddard had posted it. Yeah, and, oh, that's pretty cool. So these guys have taken two hundred plus thousand photographs of the moon. Yeah. 200,000 photographs alone and then stitched them together. Yeah. Into, I'm not, I'm not sure how colour accurate it the is. Head, the headline says astrophotographers Andrew McCarthy and Connor Mathern outdo NASA with ridiculously detailed moonshot. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about the colour rendition. I'll assume yeah. that it's accurate, but yeah. It's a 174 megapixel image. Wow, which is pretty, uh, pretty big. Uh, they did it in homage because the uh, NASA's about to send their first rocket like, moonwards with people in, on it. Well, uh, well, no, not the first one. on it. I think, I think no, the third the one. one. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, this, this is uncrewed. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, speaking of NASA and the moon, and so I was watching this um, this t- this series called The Right Stuff. Okay. Which is, if you ever seen, there's a movie called The Right Stuff way back in the day, yes. which is uh, about yep. the, the starting the space race and everything. Oh, I was really getting into it. I watched eight episodes. Yeah. And then just as it was getting interesting, it all stopped. And they were filming up into 2020, and then COVID killed oh, them. And that's no. the end of the series. It all died. It's like, no. Oh, wow. You, know, you hate it when you're just getting into something, and then bang, it's all taken away from you. And you know it'll never get rebooted because it's yeah. 22 years later. Yeah. You know? This moonshot is, is stunning, though. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd love to know how they got uh, such sharpness, such lack of haze, such lack of, yeah. Well, I guess when um, you've got 200,000 images to cherry pick from. Yeah, I guess. But still. And they're know, obviously anyway. not using just your bog standard, you know, mirrorless off the shelf. It's probably, you know, customised with... Yeah. different filters and yeah. specialised lenses and star trackers and all that sort of rubbish. So, yeah. All the good stuff. In, in, in a section just below that, in related stories, I did see, and I saw this a few times during the week, uh, that um, the Webb telescope took a yes. photo of Jupiter. Oh, isn't yeah, that is, just amazing? And then today remarkable. I saw the, that the, there's the James Webb telescope image of Pluto, Oh, I haven't seen and that. And the detail on that is just mind-boggling. Well, the, first up with the Jupiter, it's got it's got uh, 
the aurora at the top and the bottom filmed, which yeah. is quite remarkable. Um, uh, so, so that that's pretty stunning. But no, so, so oh, I'm surprised it can get any detail out of Pluto being that that far away. I know. Uh, I'm pulling it up now. I have to have a look. James Webb Pluto, and we're not talking about the dog from um, <laughs> the dog from from Disney, are we? No, we're talking about we are Pluto, not. NASA. Wow, how good is it? That's pretty stunning, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, they took years to fly a spaceship there to get a picture not as good as that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, stunning. Yeah. But some, and remember, this is this is like yeah, a couple of weeks into this thing I being know. Opera, operative. Yeah, you know? it's only just been and deployed. Yeah. So it's got Pluto and its and its moon too, yeah. Charon, which is which is quite remarkable. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of that, or I don't recall ever seeing a picture of that. Or certainly not as. Yeah, visually detailed as that. Yeah. In my life. Yeah. What a time to be alive, eh, Bruce? Totally. Let's totally. keep doing it a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, I, on, on Facebook today, I saw someone had composited, uh, well, not composited, but just uh, put the three images together of Pluto as it was photographed in 1998. And it was like this, you know, 128 pixel, you know, massively pixelated, just white blob and then yeah. another image which was taken in uh, 2005 or 2015 or something and it was you know a little bit better and then to see you know what we've now got and yeah it's just Stunning. like wow how far we've come yeah you know, just Damn. in the the visual collection of data in you know in 24 years you know yeah. <laughs> just yeah. amazing so, and you've yeah. got to think about that this james webb it's got a pretty decent focus range because it's photographing really close stuff and really far stuff. Yeah. yeah. Billions of light years away. It's yeah. all in focus. I mean, they, they, they must have like one of those either fixed focus cameras, like you used to get yeah. from Hanamex and the, uh, or a seriously good autofocus system. Because you know, <laughs> it's doing like, uh, uh, it's doing, I don't know, a couple of million kilometers, mac- yeah. which is a pretty close macro, up to infinity. Yeah. And probably even beyond, yes. frankly, you know, being that <laughs> to space. infinity and beyond. And I saw something yesterday that the James Webb Telescope has taken an image of what they now believe to be the largest galaxy in, you know, the known universe. Wow. It's the largest galaxy they've discovered so far. And it was, I think it was, from memory, 16 billion, with a B, light years across. Holy guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's like, wow. Jesus. That, 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 I wouldn't have any stars are in that. Uh, I think it said somewhere between 200 and 400 billion. No, that's what we've got in, uh, in Milky Way. Yeah, I did notice that in the article that I saw, they used the same set of numbers for both the Milky Way and this other galaxy, and I think they must have screwed up. They make it up as they go one along. One of the they? sets of numbers, yeah. yeah. So the Milky Way they estimate between two hundred and four hundred billion. Yeah, which means if if that's got the same amount, there's a hell of a lot of space between each one. It's yeah. a very sparsely sparsely. But here's the thing I found out about galaxies this week. Oh yeah, that the the inner core and the Furthest outest r- rim Reaches. of the galaxy, yeah, rotate at the same speed. Right. But that would mean all galaxies have to be spiral galaxies, but they're not. That's what I'm telling you. That's, the, that's, how, that's how they, they, they figured out there's the, that there was black, the dark matter. That, that's how one of the, one of the, the, this calculation that realised that everything was spinning at the same speed. Right. It meant there was other forces at play that they weren't aware of. Right. And that's how they came out with the concept of dark matter, which I might add, whilst well, that's on to ooh, an astro show tonight. We are. Um, <laughs> there's actually a new a new experiment being done in country Victoria uh, in the little town of Stall. Oh, I did read about this, yes. Yeah, where they're going right down into the, uh, the bottom of this big old gold mine. That's right. On an offshoot thing. There's a lab underneath there where they're going to be trying to capture particles of dark matter. Right, which sounds like a fruitless exercise. Well, apparently the, um, the the same experiment was run in the Northern Hemisphere and they found over a decade this same wave of particles came through twice a year at a particular time. Right. And that couldn't be accounted for. So to, they're going to try and replicate it down here in the Southern Hemisphere. And if they get the same results, it, it sort of proves their findings. Right. So, 
Okay. It's going to be fascinating. But it's in country old Victoria, which is yeah. kind of nice to have a yeah. bit of heavy science going on. Yep. So, yeah, so the moon, that was that was the moon and all other things waffled on about. Yeah. Uh, what else did I... Oh, then, then I, I did just come across this thing on Peter Pixel. Yeah. You've been to Peter Pixel before, haven't you? Once or twice. The Peter Pixel. He's like, but this uh, this photographer captured the bohemian area of New York in the 1920s. Oh, wow. So they take a, this, uh, this photographer, a woman photographer... Uh, would take around an eight by two, eight by ten glass plate camera around and photograph what she saw in New York. Wow! But, and whilst the photos are okay, and, and it's cool and all that sort of stuff, it just really it just look at the world. It just reminds you just how far we've come in one hundred years. Yes, yeah. just how dramatically the world is. I mean, this could be a thousand years ago for how different it is from today's world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This could be this could be looking at you know, Louis the Third and in France in the seventeen hundreds or sixteen hundreds. Yeah, but it's that far it's that far out of our re- relative understanding of what the world is like now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's astounding. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so not only were the photos pretty cool that someone was doing that sort of stuff so early, but also. It's just a reflection on the world again. So yeah, that, there's a there's cool. an image in in this uh, article, and it's got written on the bottom of it: Washington Square Bookshop, Greenwich Village, New York. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know Washington Square is a has been over. I don't know if it still is, but has over the last 50 years been this massive hangout for all artist types Mm -hmm. and particularly musicians. Springsteen hung around in that area a lot in his early days and, you know, I've heard him tell stories of all other musicians who used to frequent that area of New York and all got their start there and, yeah, wow. The Canton Crows do a lovely song called Washington Square. Right. Steve oh, yeah. Earle has a song yeah. called Washington Square Serenade. Yeah. Really? Yeah. There you go. But we were talking but, about musicians, though. There you go. <laughs> Not a yeah. fan, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm going to see Kevin Borich Express. Oh, nice. In a couple of weeks. No, no, no I don't think so. I'm Why not? not a f- well, I don't oh, I have a clue. I, I know the name. I don't think I know a single song. But a, a guy I know is coming down from Sydney, and we're all going to go out just to hang out together and see it. But uh, Look, I, I did, speaking of, speaking of of music and our friend Carl Hemmings, which we weren't, but yeah. we were speaking of music. Um, I saw he put a post up on Facebook uh, the other day because um, Midnight Oil, the Australian band Midnight mm-hmm. Oil, are playing two final, final, extra final. This is really the final, not the other <laughs> final ones that we said were final. <laughs> These ones will be final unless we do something else. Yeah. Shows in Melbourne. <laughs> uh, and I hate to say it, Carl, but I've got, I got tickets to both. <laughs> so if anything else... Is, <laughs> the, the worst thing is the, the first one they're doing, they're doing probably their most famous album, that, oh, for me, the 1098 album. Right. In its entirety... Yeah. They announced that show a couple of months ago and um, we bought tickets front row, smack bang in the middle. Oh, you know? sweet. And then COVID and the show was cancelled. Oh. I know. <laughs> so it's like, then they announced it again. They're coming back to Australia. We're, we're going to do it again. We've got 10th row this time. So it's not oh, okay. as, as good. But considering it sold out in under two minutes, yeah, right. it's pretty good. Nice. Then they announced another show because yeah, <laughs> how final do you want things to be? Yeah. Two nights later, but they're doing it. They're doing a three-hour show, three-hour plus show. They're going to do songs from every single album and EP all the way through. Wow! And that, I think that sold out in two minutes. Wow! So tickets to that too, which is really good. So um, that'd be a a week a week of a bit of music coming up. Nice. Which is good. But man, I love I love this series of images. This is great. Which series of images? <laughs> The eight by ten plate glass. Oh, those! Are, oh, I'm past that already. I've got more about her. <laughs> and if anyone does like a good bit of music and wants to see a good show, a guy I really like called um, Marcus King Band. Marcus King. Why does it sound wrong all of a sudden coming out of my head? But that's his. That's his name. That's his name. <laughs> and all of a sudden it sounds wrong. The Marcus King Band is coming over in April next year. So if you like a, a, a good bit of blues. Oh, I do. Yeah, the Marcus King Band, so check it out. They'll okay. be playing the small pub somewhere near you, Bruce. Nice. I suggest you have a bit of a listen on the old YouTube. Okay. Just a couple of his tracks. Yeah. And if you like him, which you damn well will, yeah. there's be a hell of a show to go to. So. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, next article. Yeah. Back to all things actually on track. Uh, this is something I've been doing a bit of over the last few years, mm-hmm. and I thought it was just kind of a me thing. 
it's people doing taking photos in video games. Oh, okay. So some video game video games actually have the ability to screen capture basically yeah. different moments, and the games now can have such incredible lighting and such incredible detail that yeah, you oh, so I want to take a photo of it. And this company's gone through and, and found out the top ten games that people take photos of and paste on things like Instagram and so on. Yeah, right. I played these uh, games called Assassin's Creed, yep. and the lighting is so astoundingly good you know, that I yep. uh, uh, I do uh, capture the odd photo from here, here and there. But uh, the, 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 top, the top captured one so far is 2018's Red Dead Redemption 2, but there's 457,000 photographs on Instagram for photos from the game. <laughs> that is crazy. So one, one fifth, fifth of <laughs> all posts uh, related to that game online are photos that people have taken. Wow. 457,000. That's crazy. Is, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, but if you look at some of the images, it's <clears> like, <throat> my God, there's one of these two horses coming down the track between two two real, sort of rocky yeah. outcrops. Yeah. It's like, my God, that's, that's photorealistic, you know? Yeah. And I can only imagine... As AI gets better and better, how because you look at some games, so every put every second person's face is about the same as the you know, the one or two before, sort yeah. of thing. But soon you'll have an entire game with every single character's got a different face, every yeah. and no two people in the world have a game where the people's faces are the same. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. gonna be gonna be quite remarkable. You know, yeah. So it's a big drop off from four hundred and fifty seven thousand uh, for Red Dead. Down to the ghost of Chusimo, which I've never heard of. It's only got 66 thousand. Wow! But uh, and my game's only got six thousand. <laughs> oh, hang on, they're not in order though, because the second last one is Grand Theft Auto Five with one hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred and fifty. Oh, it's not in order. That's kind of bad, isn't it? That yeah. is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's not alphabetical. Or oh, they've done it by percentage. Taken. It's on that last column. That's the that's the order oh, they've gone by. Percentage of posts yeah. versus to photos. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. I thought people might have a look at yeah, some different kind of photography yeah. as well that's kind of nice. kind of cool. Uh, what else have I got there? Um, oh, this is Nikon Z9. Yeah. It has a pre-release trigger making lightning triggers obsolete. Wow. So, basically, yeah, if you know what a pre-release, I'll yeah. explain for people who don't know, you have your camera pointed and your live view sort of going as, say, a lightning storm coming towards you. You just have to sit there and wait, and as soon as you see lightning, you press the trigger, and then it captures, like, the last nine seconds of, fo- of time yeah. as individual photos. Wow. And then you can choose the lightning shot you want out of those. Wow. So... Uh, lightning triggers can be pretty hit and miss where they'll go, but you, you're not. You're going to be pretty reliable. Oh, that was that went off in the zone that my camera's pointing at. Yep. I press the button. Nice. And you'll never miss never miss a lightning shot again. Which wow. Is, so for only ten thousand bucks, yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a bargain. You know? But yeah, we all know this sort of technology is stuff that trickles down. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's yeah. I think camera manufacturers have to do stuff like this. You now, what's why would people want to upgrade? Their existing SLRs, if they're still functional yep. and already damn good. Yep. Well, what 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 feature set are you offering that is going to change in my world and stuff like that? It's pretty darn good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And obviously, it's not just for lightning. You can use it for anything. Kids running, they're, they're yeah. running down the road, anything that's got movement that maybe you're not expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Or unable to predict the timing of it's doing it for you, which is, um, I think, pretty darn cool. Yeah. So, Nice. I thought I'd point that out as well as the future of photography. And that's all I got. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Paul Sutton sent us a couple of things. Uh, the first one is the, uh, was it wildlife? No, sorry, nature photographers. Nature. Yeah, through the lens photographer of the year 22 announced. And he said. Now, can- he, did, he, did posit, he did posit the question, though, yeah. of how can we have the best photos yeah. for 2022 already? And it's only August. Well, it's pretty simple, Paul. Pretty bloody simple, mate. This is the internet world now. Everything's faster. Everything happens quicker. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're, we're cutting out those twelve month years and making them only eight month years because <laughs> too much stuff happens in twelve months. It just counts right. as one year. <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah. Yep. Are there any good photos in it, Bruce? I'm 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 looking at it right now. Oh, the, the the macro of the uh, the bear is pretty cool. Well, not so macro, you and me straight away. That, that's the first, not macro, but it's u- uber wide. Uber wide and close. Yeah. And close, yeah. So, sorry, uh, I'll flick through the first two and near, near, oh, bear. So, yeah. we both did the same there. Yeah. Uh, near, 
<laughs> uh, you know, the the moth is yes. kind of interesting. It's, yeah, it's I mean because it's, it's motion framing's capture. Phenomenal. Yep. It's phenomenal. Its framing's phenomenal, and yes. it's 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 different and interesting. So I'll, I'll give that kudos. That is that is pretty epic. The next one. I, yeah. wa- I wonder if the moth one was cropped from the original, or does it have to be the full frame to go I in? I don't it? know, but even if it's cropped, the, the frame that's above the tree line, yeah. the tree's framing on left and right, yeah. it's still pretty darn good. It is epic. Know? Who knows how many thousands of shots were taken to get that, yeah. but it doesn't matter. You got the end result, and yeah, and your camera was pointing in that direction for a reason, so maybe they thought the process through to make that interesting that way. Yeah. So I don't know, yeah. But the, yeah, the, I no do like the one too below that with the manta ray up close. But to the it. manta ray is pretty cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Kind of gives you a fish eye view. Oh, and I like the uh, lion's eyes. I like. Well, I like the bunny actually. Funny enough, only because it's such an interesting <laughs> shape in the bunny. <laughs> yeah. The lion's eyes are cool. Yeah. So is it, again, this is this is this is typical of the world now. We see incredible photos all the time. Yeah. The really, 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 really good fail to impress us. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively. Okay, Jaden, we are. If we'd taken any of these, Bruce. Oh, we'd be over them. the moon. Uh, uh, no, there's no moon shots, Bruce. No. But it's typical bell curve distribution. Like, you know, as you say, they're all epic shots, but when you just stick them all together, then you suddenly go, okay, well, these ones it are. It becomes a, compa- a comparison yeah, size. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're right. On, on their own, all of them are brilliant. So. Yeah. So, now, how jaded are we? That's it. Yeah. Uh, he's got another link here to The Guardian, uh, and this was how beauty spots would look if all the tourists arrived at the same moment in time. <laughs> uh, and this, I thought, was very clever. And basically what they've done is over a one-hour period just taken multiple images at all of these you know, famous tourist spots around the world and then just composited it together to include as many people in the image as possible. I love it. That's really funny. Uh, Yeah. It's it's really true, though, isn't it? The world is becoming more and more overpopulated. Yep. And and some of these Instagram famous sites, they are like this. It's not fake at all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's... And I saw I saw a video footage of a, a wave pool in China early this week, right. which had as many boats and as many crafts in the water as some of these shots had. <laughs> I mean, there was thousands of people inches apart from each other, all getting smashed around oh, by these waves. It's like crazy utter carnage. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, well, that's cool idea. It's a good idea. He also sent us some feedback on the last episode. Oh, oh. We'd like to apologise in advance. Thank you for your comments and giggle fest again this time around. Regarding the museums not being interested in the collections of uh, Michael's extensive and valuable cameras, my understanding of museums is unless it has real cultural significance to Australia or the state, generally the museum won't be interested. Maybe if there was, you know, the first camera used in Australia or something used specific, such as photograph the atomic tests, for example, and was a specific to that, then the museum would be interested in the cultural aspect of that specific specimen or camera. Michael's, from the sounds of things, was a camera museum, and I'm sad to see the collection broken up, and also sad I didn't get to experience it. However, for the best collection results, it would naturally be be delivered to another camera museum, but the Australian museums are not them. It is always sad to see generations of work to be broken up like that. I hope this explanation is understandable. Oh, in tone, I mean, it costs, it costs to maintain collections. Oh, of course. Yeah. And if there's no cultural significance, absolutely. But, you know... They should have sent all of it to the Corrugated Iron Cafe at Pete's Ridge here in New South Wales. Really? Which is a little cafe that has this <laughs> this great wall. Uh, it's, it's not a huge wall. It's probably about four or five feet square with a bunch of shelves. And they've just got this great collection of old cameras <laughs> on it. Really? <laughs> Well, they would need a fairly significant room to hold them <laughs> and more to hold the Michael's collection. But, but yeah, that's the problem with, with yeah, not problem with museums. It's it's the it's the 
understanding of you know, what people go to a museum to see yeah. and yeah. what is cost effective to maintain. Yeah. But I also see, I also see I mean, that it is cultural history because one of the leading families of Victoria for the last hundred odd years has put together a collection of stuff. Yep. Now, whilst it may not be up there, alley, is there not some ability to say, well, let's see if we can marry you up with a, a deserving organisation that may be able to take care? Can we not put out through our network uh, expressions of interest where it may be able to go to a place where it can be rem- remembered as the Michaels family collection. Yeah. You know, if it would have been uh, Sydney Myers collection of cameras, who's a famous Melbourneite, mm-hmm. you know, would that maybe have swayed things or would the connections to find a better place for it? Yeah. You know? right. Who knows? Yeah. You know? But, you know, at the same time, you know, Collectors love to collect stuff and co- stuff coming from famous collections. I'm, I'm, I collect old books and yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the first to run out and buy the book catalog of someone who's selling off their entire estate of books. Right. And there's incredible collections to go to, even just to ogle through them and be a standard of the stuff that they had that I would never be able to afford to have. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But there, but the want of money, would I, would I have all that <laughs> stuff in my house? You know? Actually, I'd have to buy another house to take the stuff, but yeah. still. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'll Cool. Hey, All right. right. Well, that's another episode we've done. Waffled, we've, we've waffled on actually a reasonable length of time this week, so you have, have to apologise to everyone else to sit and listen through that. <laughs> yeah. We'll do better next time. <laughs> and by better, I mean less. <laughs> All right, mate. Will you have a good couple of weeks? I shall. Oh. I shall. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. We, we, oh. We're going to be we're gonna be gone for a while. Are you? Yeah, because Kath and I and another couple... We're going on yeah. a road trip around New South Wales. We don't want to see those Wales. things, Bruce. We're going on a road trip around New South Wales. Really? Yeah, so we leave next Saturday, so the 3rd, and we'll be away for... 3rd of September. Yeah, so we'll be away for a week and a half. So, oh, we might be able to record the Thursday after that, which is about the 10th or the 11th or something like that. So it'll probably be a three-week gap between this episode and the next. And then I'm away for a couple of weeks towards the end of September. Oh. So... Oh, we'll, we'll have to make sure we we'll squeeze, squeeze that one, one in. The middle. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cool. And oh, we can do a big, long waffle one like this, and you can release it in, like, four 15-minute parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Peter mate. Mean, Kevin Kane. Yeah, that's all it. All right, everybody. Enjoy your. Well, thanks two for weeks, listening. If you're weeks. listening this far, if you've got if you've gone away to here, or you're just waking up now, <laughs> um, good night. Good night. See you, mate. Bye. You've been listening to Shutters Inc. For questions, comments, and feedback, email the boys at shuttersincpodcast.com. dot